Hello, lovely, shiny people of the Virtual Village Hall. My name is Ron McCabe, and this is a poem about purpose. It's called Career Choice. I never had a dream job. My mother would ask us what I wanted to be frequently. It seemed a big commitment. Fireman, astronaut, doctor, musician. None of them really fit. Nothing did till year nine, Tuesday, Miss Espinosa's class. See, the career service had this computer programme that measured every element of your personality. Once processed, it would reveal your perfect career. And today, today was the day we got the results. Can you imagine my excitement as I held that envelope? Knowing within its folds lay the blueprint of my entire destiny. Every obstacle, every victory, I tore it open. Dear Rowan, thank you for taking part in the Careers Decision Programme. We have analysed all of the data and can now confirm the perfect career for you is Motorcycle Courier. A motorcycle courier? It, it was unexpected, but I could see now that this was perfect. Leather jacket, Levi jeans, weaving between traffic in busy metropolitan streets. I'd have a studio apartment, an espresso machine, play saxophone and a jazz quartet. The wind on my cheeks, a grip on the handlebars, worlds from the big wig suits in the eternal hamster wheel race. This, this was my ride out of this place. I ran home, bursting with the incredible news. Ma'am, I am going to be a motorcycle courier, I cried. No, you're flipping not, she replied. So, hello. Today is World Poetry Day. Woo! Exciting times. It's World Poetry Day. I hope you're all doing something poetical right now. I hope you're um I hope you're talking exclusively in metaphor for the entirety of the day, or just kind of wallowing in a fuzzy pit of melancholy. Like however you wanna enjoy World Poetry Day today. Um I hope you're doing something pleasant and suitable for it um i'm gonna be reading some stuff from uh my new book which is exciting Whew. it came out on friday um it's it's a collection of 12 poems commissioned by the national trust in honor of william wordsworth's 250th birthday i called it hopeless romantic because i am and I'm a terrible romantic poet. I don't know why they asked us to do the job. To be honest, I don't know anything about nature, um, incidentally. And uh, I, I was asked, uh, well, I was I was doing a pub quiz a few years ago. And one of the questions was, uh, a name a bird beginning with the letter N. And uh, I, I could have chose a few different birds, couldn't I? Lovely people of the virtual village hall. I could have chose the nightingale. Arguably the poet's bird of choice, but I I panicked. I, I just said the first thing that popped into my head, which was Nunu, a, a Nunu bird. Uh, I don't know if anyone is familiar with what a Nunu actually is. Uh, it's not a bird, as I found out quite quickly afterwards. It's a, it's a character from the Teletubbies. Yeah, it's a, it's a little sort of vacuum cleaner thing that lives with the Teletubbies. Anyway, didn't really know anything about nature. But I was asked as, as part of the commission to be poet in residence at William Wordsworth's childhood house in Cockermouth. 
Um, I kind of imagined I would be hanging out in the Lake District quite a lot, trying to teach myself something about nature, maybe trying to learn the names of some flowers. Uh, and that'll probably be what the project uh, ends up being about. Uh, but I was asked to do this uh, in February 2020, and it was meant to start in March 2020. Uh, and everything sort of went uh, off in a very, very different direction. Um, and me and the good people at the National Trust, uh, we decided we, we should carry on with the project, but maybe just kind of embrace what was going on at the time. So the poems started... Um, well, they sort of ended up becoming uh, more of a discussion of, of the year 2020 to 2021 um, and kind of what was happening. So this is one of the first things that I wrote as part of it. It's called Last Days. I was leaving King's Cross when everything locked. The carriage empty. The conductor suspiciously upbeat. We have a lot of free seats today. Spread yourself out and relax while beyond the glass, fist fighting over toilet paper. We picked up speed, shot into the country. It occurred to us that this might be the last train I ever take. Silly. But I began to make a mental note of golden fields patchwork hedgerows, coolant towers, riversides flashing up for a moment before fading indefinitely. Maybe, I thought, my children will ask us what it felt like to ride on a train, and I will have to explain I was mostly looking backwards or somewhere into space, that I never really stopped to clock what it was till it seemed about to vanish on the very last day. So yeah, things things went in a bit of a different direction. Um, I was uh, I was kind of imagined I'd be uh, a swanning around the Lake District, um, but I spent my time doing what what we all did really, living in various states of lockdown. Here in my house in Newcastle, and uh, I decided I was going to try and keep myself busy in another way, though. Uh, so one of the ways uh, I tried to reach out to people uh, as part of the project was to do something I call post to post poetry. Um, some people tuning in might be familiar with my door to door poetry project. If you're not, don't worry. I will explain how post to post poetry works. So I decided I was going to send off. A load of letters to random addresses uh, on one street in Cockermouth. Cockermouth being Wordsworth's uh, childhood town. Um, and the letter basically said, uh, hello, my name is Rowan. You, you don't know me, but I'm a poet. Uh, and I'd really like to write you a poem for free on any subject that's important to you. I've, I've left um, some blank paper and a pen in the envelope and uh, a stamped uh stamp envelope as well with my address on uh write back to us tell us what's important to you whatever that is uh and i will uh i'll write a poem about it and post you back and uh one of the ones i got back uh was from a man who asked to be referred to as s he didn't want to share his, his full name i mean that might just be his full name i don't know maybe it's just s um but yeah he, he wrote back um and he was kind of um settling into this um strange period of lockdown that we were in and everything was very quiet and peaceful and he asked for a poem about that so i wrote s this it's called homegrown he's been talking to his plants newfound friends conversations with them have replaced family get-togethers pub banter they cover a wide range of subjects. Turns out the geraniums are particularly passionate about the future of the arts. He's not sure what their stance is on trips to Barnard Castle, but he's pretty sure they bloom faster after talk of immediate sacking. They're enjoying the bird song. It's funny how it's taken a pandemic to show us what we'd lost. 
They spend long afternoons in the garden. Did you hear that one? I know. I think it's a robin. People are tedious. He's grown accustomed to the way a plant conducts itself. They knack for adapting. Before bed, he says goodnight to each one individually. Thinking of tomorrow and the little changes you can't see. So I've done a few things for the uh, the virtual village hall now, but this is the first time I've done something using this new platform, the StreamYard. It's really cool. It's very technological. I've got no idea if anyone's tuned in, though. I hope there are people out there listening. I'm sure there are. I'm going to imagine you're out there and you've got lovely smiling faces. Um, so, uh, yeah, I... Uh, another thing, I guess, um, that the poems in the, in the collection started to do, as well as kind of chronicling uh, national events and, uh, you know, stories uh, that other people had sent us, um, unavoidably, um, it, it felt important to kind of write about stuff that was happening to me as well. Um, oh, yes, Catherine Pabler is here. I've got a message saying they're here. Brilliant. OK, so we've got, yeah, we've got one audience member, at least. I'm sure there'll be more. I'm sure there'll be more. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, it felt important to to kind of chronicle uh, stuff that was happening to me as well as other people. Um, and uh, at, at the end of 2020, I lost my granddad to cancer, um, which was which was tough. You know, it, it was tough like it was for a lot of people. We were in a lockdown. I couldn't really go and see him. Um, and, it, and it all kind of happened quite suddenly. Um and I had a bit of a kind of unusual relationship with my granda in the, in the sense that he was very, very quiet, um, and particularly quiet. I could probably count the words that he said to us in my whole life on, on one hand. Um, and, and I suppose without ever really fully um, thinking it through logically, I, I kind of internalised a little bit of, of shame about that. I, I just kind of assumed the reason he didn't speak to as much was because he didn't really like us that much which when I say it out loud that seems really ridiculous but I suppose sometimes when you, you haven't really thought these things through you can you can end up kind of assuming these things um but yeah um after he passed away um I went to his funeral uh and something happened that kind of made us realize um that that wasn't the case and uh I'm not going to tell you what that is because I think the, the poem will probably do that so this is called Strawberry Fields in Church. Strawberry Fields in St Aloysius Church. Hymns are banned, which suits me. So stars, drums, shake stained glass as the cavernous rafters sing like the cavern. And the priest is Sergeant Pepper spilling holy water on your coffin. We sit on cold pews, masked. I stroke the photo album, my grandma pressed in my hands before we shuffled off, heads down to face the day. I arrived after you'd fell unconscious. A few minutes to consider the irony. We spoke more openly in this time than in the last 30 years of my life. But as your epitaph is read, I feel that album's weight. Hundreds of photographs, painstakingly dated and timed. A chronicle of moments I'd forgotten or was too young to recall. A message in a bottle you hid in a loft afloat beyond your horizon. And the words hit harder for ringing twice true. As the priest tells of how you like the simple things, watching things grow. How you had social anxiety and often found it difficult to cope. The bottle breaks with the wave as I realise the mistake wasn't in the things you didn't say. It was in my need to hear them, my utter lack of faith.
Oh, thank you very much, Kim. Kim Carter says she's enjoying the poems. Lovely. I'm really pleased about that. Um, I've got one more, and then I'm going to head off. Um, if anyone wants a book, uh, these are six pounds, and you can get them from my website, rowanthepoet.com. There's a link in the comments, I believe, uh, to my website. But yeah, if you get lost, just Google Rowan McCabe. It should pop up. Um, yeah, and I hope you have a lovely rest of your day, whatever it is you get up to. Um, hopefully it's something poetical. Maybe all of it's poetical. I don't know. I'm getting a bit philosophical now, aren't we? What is poetry? You know, is this poetry? Well, well this is technically. I said this was poetry. But I mean, like this, is this, is is this poultry? Is, is this, is this tape measure poultry? Maybe it is, I don't know. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm going to finish one. Um, I guess um, what was another thing that was kind of interesting about this whole project uh, was, yeah, it was, it was going to always last uh, from about March 2020 to March 2021. Uh, it ended up going on a little bit longer than that, but it was it was roughly a year from March 2020. So as well as um, kind of having a chance to write about some of the um, kind of more turbulent um, moments of that year, um, I was it was also covered a period when things started to kind of change again, and we were approaching what seemed to be a, a kind of end point of of the whole pandemic. Uh, so uh, with that in mind, I'm going to leave you on this one. Uh, thanks very much for tuning in. It's always a pleasure. This is called First Dose of Pfizer. And when it was over, I was handed a white sticker with the numbers 1523 inscribed upon it in permanent marker. And I was escorted to a small room in the Methodist church, which stank of wool and biscuits and are being converted into a miniature replica of every senior school exam hall ever, complete with a sleepy invigilator, a clock with a deafening second hand. Plastic seats spaced amply apart, I was invited to take one at the front while they decided whether or not I might die. I beheld an electric organ, a dated radiator which was inexplicably on despite the blazing summer heat beyond. An awkward silence. People read, swiped screens, tried to cast their minds to anywhere but this. And look, I get it. It continues to be a tough year. Nobody wants a needle, no matter how efficiently it's administered. But as I gazed at the other faces, what I noted most wasn't fear so much as boredom, wasn't sadness so much as blankness. And it occurred to us that we would look back on this as the single greatest achievement of our generation. Our space race, our railway, our Knowles house party. And when people asked us where I was, I would have to tell them. I was in a Methodist church in North Tyneside next to a builder on Instagram. I thought about how in life, the waiting often goes on for longer than seems possible. Yet in the end, the solutions jab you so quickly and sharply, there's little time to celebrate. How much we want it to be Hollywood Yet how the defining moments take place when no one's looking. And how at 1523 we would stand, walk out of this place, total strangers, visibly the same, yet somewhere deep in the bones of were changed. Though how much, and for how long, it was difficult to say. Thank you very much. I will see you later.